All right, so for our wave speed lab, we're gonna do a few things. We're going to be able to determine how characteristics of a medium affect wave speed. We're gonna determine the wave speed by two different experimental methods. And we're gonna calculate wave speed using a theoretical equation to see if our experiments agree with theory. And for this, you're gonna to have to follow these directions and uh, fill out the lab assigned. Now it's important for this lab that you do not stretch the snaky springs, these guys right here, don't stretch them longer than 10 meters. If you do, you gotta buy us a new one. These are like between 15 and 20 bucks because they will not bend back. If you stretch them too far, they get like this and then they don't work as a snaky spring anymore. So let's go ahead and get started with this. Uh, to start, we're gonna determine how characteristics of the medium affect the wave speed of a transverse wave pulse. Now the characteristics that we're going to determine how they affect it are the characteristics of tension. So in other words, here's our spring tension right here. How this tension affects it like that. Right now this tension is 10 newtons. And also how the linear mass density affects it. Linear mass density, what the heck is that? Uh, that is the mass per unit length of the medium. Here's an example of a spring with high linear mass density. It's got a lot of mass per meter. This one has lower linear mass density. The one on the bottom, lower linear mass density like that. Let me see if I can bring those up to the, the camera so you can see. Top one, high linear mass density. Bottom one, lower linear mass density. The one on top weighs more, has more mass per meter than the one in the bottom. It has lower mass per meter of length. Now, uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to measure the effect of tension on uh, the, uh, the tension of a rope on wave speed of a transverse pulse. Now, the thing is we can't use a spring to test this variable because if we change the tension, uh, well, you tell me. I'm going to change the tension here of this spring. And when I do this, I'm unintentionally changing another variable, right? I'm going to increase the spring tension. And what's the difference there? What am I changing besides the tension in the spring? I'm changing the linear mass density of the spring. So that is why I need to use something that won't change its linear mass density with different tensions. And just so happens I've got a rope right here. Look what happens with this rope. Notice that I can, once I get these, uh, the uh, get the knot uh, to be tight, uh, I can increase the tension. But notice that the rope's staying about the same length. So increase the tension. The linear mass density for this thing does not change. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to do a demo where I send a pulse down this rope and take a look at the wave speed. Now, the issue with the rope is it's kind of hard to see the pulse, so I've enhanced it a little bit with some uh, movie magic so you can keep track of where the pulse is at any time. So here's the demo. In the top frame, I'm going to send a pulse down a rope with low tension, and in the bottom frame, I'm going to send a pulse down a rope with high tension. Now you can see that the low tension rope has a tension of six newtons, where the high tension rope has a tension of 16 newtons. And if you carefully watch where the pulses are, you can follow them with the arrows in this slow motion demo. And you can see that one of them wins by about a mile. Uh, you might also notice that when it reflects, it does invert. But nevertheless, the pulse, it's clear that one of them travels faster than the other. Here's a simulation of that on the fet.colorado.edu website. You can see very clearly here that one of them has much greater speed. Now that we've observed that demonstration, uh, you need to state if and or how changing the tension of our medium affects the wave speed of a transverse pulse. And it is true that it actually affects the wave speed of a longitudinal pulse in the same way, but all we've seen the demonstration for is a transverse pulse. So go ahead and make your conclusion about that. Once you are done with that, you are going to determine the effect of linear mass density. That's mass per unit length. 
how many kilograms per meter of a spring, uh, how that affects wave speed of a transverse pulse. So you're going to have to figure out what do you have to keep constant, what do you have to change, and you're going to actually do that in the lab. Now, if you're doing this at home and you don't have access to lab materials, uh, you can actually uh, click this link right up here, uh, and that has a simulation of it, but it's way better to try it in lab if you have materials available. So go ahead and give that a try and record your results, and uh, good luck in lab. We'll see you there.